about 10 to 12 tomatoes, a ripe one and a medium sized carrot. I have cubed the carrot and I have added a one to one and a half glasses of water and now I'll be making a whistle in it. So the process gets quicker. I'll cook this on medium flame till one to two whistles and until everything is nice and if you like you can add onions and garlic also but I don't feel like so I'm not adding it and the recipe does not call for it so make sure you take some nice good quality of ripe tomatoes because if your tomatoes are not ripe the soup won't be that good like the taste won't come that good so try taking some nice good ripe tomatoes Now that the air has released, I'll just open the lid and let it cool for a while. Now that our mixture is quite cool, so I'll be blending it with the hand blender. the tomatoes and carrots so now I'll start straining it as you can see these tomato skins and seeds will come through sieving this puree or straining it as you may say and down there we are getting the pulp so I'll keep doing this this is why we strain these, this puree because lots of skin and seeds of tomatoes are there in which we cannot see during the seed, the puree and the puree. So that's why we have to strain this thing. Yeah, I have heated some butter in my pan or you can say a large a deep vessel which you can, you know, which you can cook slowly, thick bottom vessels. As the butter will melt, I'll add a little bit of and oil. saute some maida or flour. Here goes in some oil. As you can see, it's melted and I'll add 2 to 3 tablespoons of flour. I felt like adding more, so I just added more flour and now I'll be cooking it until it's nice and brown. And as you can see the flour is cooking right now, as you can see its color is changing. Now I'll be adding my tomato puree.
I'll add the rest of the tomato puree. <coughs> As you can see, there are flour lumps. So I'll just quickly whisk it until all the lumps are broken as you can see I am whisking this soup right now which is on the flame so the lumps are initially broken and, uh, and we get a smooth paste As you can see, there are no lumps right now. We will let it cook on a normal flame until it's nice and thick. As you can see, my soup is over a simmering stage and it's nice and thick. Now I'll be adding a little bit of salt. It's according to your taste as much like I have added a small teaspoon and a little bit on top. I have added salt. I won't add pepper at this stage because some of my family members don't like it and some like it. So the ones who will like it, I will serve it upon their bowl, not directly into the soup. As you can see, the soup it's is looking changing the color. Way. Now, within a few minutes, I'll be adding cream because as you know, tomato soups are all about cream. <laughs> So, yeah, we we'll let it cook for a while. Now the stage has come when I'll be adding cream. Normal is also fine and fresh is also fine. Whichever you have, it's comfortable. I'll be adding this brand's cream. It's Nestle. Where I live, I live in Dubai. So this is available for me right now. So I'll be adding this one too. Now I'll be adding cream. It's not the fresh one apparently. But whichever I have available right now. As you know, cream tends to tone get away, so I'll be just whisking it. I'll keep stirring until it's smooth and fine back and let it be boiling. Mm -hmm. My soup has started boiling and it's back to normal stage. As you can see the color has changed a bit but it will regain it after a few boils. So we let it boil. I have added a teaspoon of ketchup. I saw goes. I just forgot to record it. I'm sorry. But now it's still boiling. Now that my soup is boiling and it's nice thick. So we'll just... Uh, close the flame and let's see if we season anything else. now i have closed the flame and i'll be adding a teaspoon or uh, two 
वन टी स्पून और टू टी स्पून ऑफ शुगर Now as you can see the color has regained it's turned into red again and I'll be switching off the flame so our soup is ready and ready to serve